Hi everybody, January 6th, the day that will go down in infamy. It's another one of those uh, uh, red letter days in uh, in history. Uh, it's, uh, but I'm gonna, there's so much going on today about that, I'm gonna just let the uh, news media handle that and I'm gonna continue on with music uh, today. Um, I, I was digging through, you know, once again, I was digging through the the dusty archives of my of my career, and um, I came across a project that was really a, a cool project that I hadn't. It's not that I had forgotten about it, but it's just been a long time since I heard any of this, and so I thought I would dig up a little bit of history, and uh, I found some stuff online that I'll read because uh, it, this goes pretty deep. Um, but then I'll just play some music from it. But this was from a project we did 50 years ago. I mean, this is when I, every time I say that, like 50 years ago, there's an aspect of it that just feels like yesterday. So it's really hard to fathom that it was a half a century. But the artist was Ronnie Blakely, and we did this album back in 72, 1972. And, um, and it was a self-titled album. And it was uh, produced by Robert Zachary Jr. and um, John Haney engineered it. And John, I did many, many projects uh, with John Haney over the years. Um, some of Jackson's albums, and John was just one of those guys. He he was a, a staple engineer in Los Angeles during that period, especially. So I, so many times I'd walk in the door, and there would be John. Didn't matter what studio, because so many guys were. Independent, so they were working all the different studios. Um, but um, I'm going to just read a little bit because she really had a, a, has a fascinating life. Um, it starts off with saying, uh, Blakely released her self-titled album on Electra Records in 1972. The album featured Blakely's original songs, self-accompanied on piano. Blakely also made the musical arrangements. The song Bluebird features a duet with Linda Ronstadt. Blakely's songs were published by her own company, Sawtooth Music. Um, that same year, uh, her second album, Welcome, produced by Jerry Wexler and recorded in Muscle Shoals Sound in Alabama, was released on Warner's in 75. That's, this is where it gets interesting. That same year, Blakely appeared in what may be her most widely known performance in Nashville, the Robert Altman movie. Her character, Barbara Jean, looks similar to country star Loretta Lynn, though Blakely stated the character was based on Lynn Anderson. Blakely performed her own songs in character, including Tape Deck on, in his tractor, Dues, and My Idaho Home, where she was actually from. In, in her review of the, in the New Yorker, film critic Pauline Kael wrote, This is Ronnie Blakely's first movie, and she puts most hysteria to shame. She achieves her gifts so simply. I wasn't surprised when somebody sitting beside me started to cry. Perhaps for the first time on screen, one gets the sense of an artist being destroyed by their own gifts. Blakely's performance in Nashville uh, was nominated for an Academy Award for Best Supporting Actress, Golden Globe Award for Best Supporting Actress, Motion Picture, and for Best uh, Acting Debut in a Motion Picture, Female, a BAFTA Award for Best Actress in a Supporting Role, and the Grammy Award for Album for Best Original Score, written for a Motion Picture or Television Series, and won the National Board of Review Award for Best Supporting Actress. She was also featured on the covers of uh, Newsweek, American Cinematographer, and Interview Magazine. She toured with Bob Dylan's Traveling Rolling Thunder Review, singing a set of solo original songs accompanying herself on piano. Um, she also sang with Dylan and other headlining musicians on the tour. Uh, she recorded backup vocal vocals on Hurricane uh, for uh, Dylan's album Desire. She also recorded with Hoyt Axton and Leonard Cohen. Um, Blakely starred in the 77 film, She Came to the Valley. She also appeared in several TV movies, including Desperate Women, Ladies in Waiting, Oklahoma City Dolls, and the Ford 75th Anniversary Special, Presentation of the Glass Menagerie. Her guest starring roles in television series included Vegas, The Love Boat, Highway to Heaven, Trapper John, Hotel, The Runaways, Beyond Westworld, and Tales from the Dark Side. Um, then it goes to so that's just in the 70s. Um, she starred in a movie, The Baltimore Bullet, in 80. She appeared on Broadway in 82's Pump Boys and Dinettes and starred in Rain uh, for the uh, Indiana Repertory Theater. Blakely played the role of Marge Thompson in the 84 horror film uh, Nightmare on Elm Street. 
She wrote, produced, directed, and starred in her own feature uh, music docudrama, I Play For You, in 1985. Uh, it, it, uh, uh, the movie debuted at the Venice Film Festival and was screened at several other film festivals around the world. Sheila Benson of the Los Angeles Times called it a passionate and brave and absorbing, wor absorbing work. Um, and it goes on into her personal life and all kinds of stuff. She's been a, a, an outspoken person on social uh, causes and civil rights and women's rights. Um, and it, 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 I mean, she's an amazing gal. And it was really fun when we did this album. So... Um, I thought I would just go ahead and play a few of the songs that we did. The band on this album is Ronnie Blakely on piano and vocals, myself on bass, Russ Kunkel on drums, the great Buddy Emmons on steel guitar, John Schell on guitar, um, Don Brooks on bass harmonica, Jimmy Buchanan on viola, Vince DeRosa, on French horn, Milt Kestenbaum on string bass, and the background vocals are Bob Zachary and also Linda Ronstadt. So here's Ronnie Blakely. Let's go ahead and listen to some of this. And this is, again, this is from a half a century ago. So this song is called Cock of the Walk. Cock o the Walk, actually, is the way it's written out. Here we go. <laughs> Thanks. 
let that piano ring out. So here is, let's do Bluebird. called Down the River, or Down to the River. This is, boy, it was just the sonics of it and the feel of it all, boy, it really takes me right back to that. This was really like, in all, all, when I start talking about tracks like these, these are all within the first couple of years of our actual careers all beginning. So it's really interesting to me to hear it, you know, hear when I listen to songs from 70, 71, too, with, and with me and Russ, and it's, it's amazing that the feel I had with him low those many years ago still feels the same when we play together. It's a, it's a remarkable experience, I'll tell you. So here's Down to the River. <laughs> Jesus came in the morning, he didn't kiss no women. 
saying in the middle of that, um, Russell's brushwork really defined a whole other style of playing. I mean, their guys had all had brushes, but when you listen back to James Taylor's um, music and stuff with him, and so many sessions, he would come in, and then he would just start playing brushes, and his rhythmic thing that he did, because most guys with brushes were just doing, you know, tossing the salad, as they say, you know, he just kind of just giving it a little bit of that, but I mean, his rhythmic work with brushes really defined a whole sound that uh, to this day when he does it, I just, boy, I have to just smile and just go, yeah, Russ, <laughs> you're amazing. Here's one last song. This is called Dues. Here we go.
brings back great memories. Um, I'm still I'm glad I still have memories. <laughs> it's a lot of people at this point in life going, oh, I don't remember anything. Uh, I feel fortunate. Um, so that's Ronnie Blakely, and that was a self-titled album from 1972. Um, but a really fascinating artist, you know, and has had quite a life beyond music um, or incorporating music into a, 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 an interesting life, uh, which is really a, a great achievement. Um, I want to say thank you, everybody, for um, kicking off the... Uh, clubhouse yesterday for the new year it was great catching up with everybody i mean it's it's hard for me i i i find the thing that's so fascinating about it is, is all of the internal conversations that start to develop on there and i'm sitting there like so completely schizophrenic trying to keep an eye on conversations and answer questions and then be engaged but then i'm suddenly seeing questions that make no sense to me and i realize again that there's an internal conversation going on and people are talking amongst themselves. So I feel like an eavesdropper sometimes, like, you know, just back off and find somebody else. They're already talking, you know, they don't need you in there. But it was great, you know, as soon as all the names started popping up, it felt like, you know, a, a really uh, cool family reunion, you know, with family that you really <laughs> enjoy and not looking over going, oh God, he's here, oh, she's here. Oh, this is a, what a nightmare. Uh, this ain't like that, as one would say. Uh, it's a great bunch of, of people, and I'm excited about it. Um, so th let's see. We had that. I got an, a, a great email from uh, Greg Richling today, who's one of the producers of the documentary film, saying they're really close to us seeing a, uh, a, a pretty done rough cut of, of the movie, uh, the documentary, which is going to be exciting. And it's fun talking to Greg because um, Greg was the bass player in The Wallflowers with Jacob Dylan, So uh, he's a muso guy. I mean, he's, he's one of the producers on this, but his, his roots are, are deep in music, which is, makes it really great having somebody like that involved with it, just like having Denny Tedesco directing it. You know, I mean, his history in music is, is so deep with his family. So um, I'm excited about that. Uh, I can hardly wait to, to report on it. Um, so hopefully not in not too distant future, we will be able to have a sit down in a, in a real theater situation and, and see what the hell they came up with, how they, as <laughs> we always go, go just going to have to go in today and polish that turd. <laughs> we'll see what happens with all this. I'm sure it's going to be amazing. You know, it's just, it's, it's hard to imagine being the uh, subject of a movie. It's, it's, it's still hard to wrap my head around, but, um. So um, I'm going to take care of a bunch of things today, and um, I'm going to wish everybody a wonderful day. Um, again, 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 hate it, but uh, numbers are soaring, and uh, so many things are getting um, pushed off and canceled and postponed, and we just don't know, you know, what's happening. Um, I mean, yesterday when the Grammys got postponed indefinitely, we don't know when it's going to be yet. Uh, it was it was so disappointing, and just from the standpoint when we do the pre Grammy show, uh, it's even though it's not televised, it is one of the most enjoyable things I get to do uh, during the year um, because you, when you watch the Grammys, they give away about eight awards, and it's a giant dog and pony act, and all this giant production and all that stuff. The pre Grammy show is where they give the major bulk of all the awards, and we have to. We have an incredible band that, that we don't do the Grammys televised show, we do the pre-show, but it's a great band, and Cheche Alara is our musical director, and we end up doing probably between 80 and 100 pieces of music during the course of that, and then when that ends, all the people at that show, then they go over to the other theater for the actual televised show in the evening. But just it's something we all look so forward to, and the, and the idea that we, we got the... Uh, they pulled the plug on it yesterday and said, well, we'll see, you know, a couple of months, we'll see if we can do the show. So it's, and until people are really all healthy, um, it, it's just going to continue to be this, this kind of daily, what the hell's happening situation. So, um, but my heart especially always goes out to everybody working within the healthcare community, because they're really the ones that are being subjected daily to this, this 
endless onslaught of this um, this thing we're going through. And uh, they are champions of the time, that's for sure. They're really uh, sacrificing so much for this. So um, if you get a moment, just take a second and just put out a good thought to all the people that are still there. It's, it's hard to call it frontline anymore, but they are, they are really, the front lines never shut down. It's just now it's back in, in full steam. So thank you all so much for that. Um, I'll be back tomorrow and I wish everybody a great day. And, um, and that's Ronnie Blakely. So hi, Ronnie, wherever you are. Bye-bye. <laughs>